My name is Frank Fuller. I'm a foreman electrician for Royal Electric. I have roughly 20 years of experience. I've uh, been a foreman for about 15 years. We're currently in East Palo Alto at Calibri Commons. We've got four buildings, multifamily, 136 units, five level garage. Uh, we have the interns showing up today to give them a tour of the job site. We're currently in the rough-in phases of the units. We're boxing, drilling, and we are also working on deck work in the garage. So we're extremely excited to have them out. So we're here today at Calibri, guys, because um, it's a really cool project. And Frank's, um, this is Frank's second, right? Second Frank, project with yeah, Royal. With Royal. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I'll let him introduce kind of like what we're doing here, but it's a really good opportunity for you guys to see because um, we have two P Palo Alto jobs, right? So you guys went to Grant and now we're at Calibri, um, but it's just a good opportunity for you guys to see different types. Yeah. Yeah, so this is a multifamily project, residential. It's got 136 units. It's four buildings. So we got building A, B, C, and D. Uh, building A is a five level parking structure with units wrapped around it. And then we got the other three buildings, which are just units. And we got catwalks in between each building, so all the buildings connect. So for example, if you park on the fourth level of the parking garage, you're able to walk from the parking garage straight to, through the fourth level of each building. Wow. Uh, right now, the phase we're in, we're working on the deck work and the vertical walls, the concrete walls. So we're getting all our electrical conduit and infrastructure in for that. And then we're working on, um, Roughing in the units, boxing. Uh, the next phase would be roping. And once we take our tour, I'll show you guys that. Nice, awesome. Yeah, and then we have, um, so these are all our interns here. So they're interning for this summer. Um, we have interns who are majoring in construction management, electrical engineering, uh, business, and then education. Um, but it's cool because we have like interns from like Sac State um, and then Boise State here. So right on. I thought it'd be cool for them to come and like pick your guys' brain. So yeah, for sure. Cool. Yep. Let's go. Uh, let's do it. <laughs> We'll follow you guys. Okay, go ahead. And then building C is the one in between. They're on the third floor. Building B right here, they're getting ready to start framing the second floor. So it's kind of like a, uh, a step ladder, you know what I mean? They started with that building, then they started with this building and this building. Eventually, I'll have guys working in all four buildings. Wow. And so you're saying that there's going to be catwalks connected to each building? Yeah, and they'll have, I'll show you guys the footings for the catwalks. They'll have catwalks in between each building from the second floor to the fourth floor. Oh, wow. And then they That's use these really cranes cool. to lift all the wood up to the level for them to frame up and, and stuff like that. So these, these cranes will be on the site for, for a while. So when did you guys start and then when do you anticipate finishing? Oh, uh, we started, I think we started in January, okay. and we anticipate being done September 2025. Okay. And wow. we're currently on schedule, so cool. we're meeting the schedule. Cool. Weather factors like rain and stuff? It does. So, for example, this was an Indian, uh, mm. Indian site, so a, Indi a Native American burial site. Okay. So we had to have an archaeologist on site before we started digging. So that impacted it. So, for example, if they couldn't be on site, we weren't allowed to dig. So that impacts the schedule. Uh, rain impacts the schedule because if it's too muddy on the job site, the equipment will sink and mess up the grade. You have to be at a certain height and a certain thickness of the, of the dirt, of the pad. So if the equipment's rolling around in the mud, it messes that all up. It's all engineered. So wow. during the rain, you have to stop. Depending on the job site, this one you had to stop. While the um, backhoe and the excavator was digging the dirt, they would sift through the dirt once in a while you know, and, and they then, know um, what they're looking for. Yeah. They know exactly what they're looking for. They actually train us before we start digging so oh, that wow. we know what we're looking for. They'll show us pictures and diagrams and what jewelry looks like, what hum oh, human wow. remains That's look like. Pretty yeah. Cool, though. yeah, so there's a lot of interesting stuff that goes on oh, with nice. construction. Yep. Nice. Cool. And Frank, how long have you been doing this? I've been doing it for 20 years. I've been a foreman for 15 years. Nice. So right when I journeyed out, a little bit before I journeyed out, I started running work. I caught on a little, yeah. little fast. What yeah. made you want to get into the trades? Um, it's interesting. I wanted to work with my hands. Nice. Um, I was actually an operations manager for a trucking company. Oh, wow. And uh, <clears throat> they changed ownership. So I started looking into the trades and going to school for that. Nice. That's yeah. cool. It doesn't take too long to get certified. So, yeah. Nice. Cool. And you have to tell residents that this was uh, Native American. 
Native American I don't believe land. you do. Uh, most of the land here is Native American land. So oh. um, I don't think you have to tell anybody it or anything. It's not like they own, they don't own the actual property, but out of respect for the natives, because it used to be their land, um, they have to be here and monitor in case we find any of their relatives or ancestors. It's out of respect so that if they did find some human remains, uh, it would be turned over to them, to the tribe, and the tribe would rebury it rebury them somewhere else yeah oh, wow. so it's all about respect and and things sure. like that are they still on site now or are they not uh no i believe all the digging is done but oh, when yeah. we start digging again so for example we can't dig in between the buildings right now because of the scaffolding and because of the cranes mm. so when we start digging in between the buildings to connect our conduits before we pull wire they'll be back out here so anytime there's digging going on there's an archaeologist this is where the parking garage is so you guys see this red danger tape? We're not allowed to cross it. So anytime you guys see red danger tape, you cannot cross it by any means. If it's yellow, it's just caution and you just gotta proceed slowly. So since they blocked off this entrance, we're gonna go back down and around and walk up, up the ramp. Okay. All right, cool. No, I, I haven't, but I've heard of other job sites. Find, find, yeah, with Royal and other companies finding remains, finding pottery. This is feeding half of the units over here. It's all fed from underground. And that's it. So eventually they'll have walls and on that wall I'll have my electrical panels and everything piped in and, and whatnot. So we pull all our wire through here and that's how they, we feed electrical throughout the building. Are you guys doing charging stations? We are doing charging stations. Nice. Yeah, we got four or five charging stations on every level. Oh, on every level? Yeah, so wow. pretty much nowadays, uh, there's vehicle chargers on every yeah, job. It kind of yeah. has to be, right? It's a normal thing yeah. now, yep. That's cool. Nice. So check this out, guys. So that that's where you enter the garage. So the cars will enter there, and they'll drive up, and they'll roll around to go to their different levels, all the way up to the roof, which is technically the fifth floor. And so what we're doing is, if you guys take a look right there, you see those boxes right there with that conduit coming out of it? It's kind of like 90 and out right there. So let's go up there. Yeah. So we got that box with that conduit, that's a light. That's how we run our wire into it. And what it's doing is 90 into the deck. Cause all, we got conduits inside this deck right here. Just like that one right there. There's another light. So like this conduit is coming from the light facing down, continuing in the ceiling. And then all these blue cables are post-tension cables. So in order to keep the concrete thin and less rebar, because the more material, the more money, they use post-tension cables and they put thousands and thousands of pounds of pressure on it and it acts as rebar. So that it's all structural. That's pretty much what's holding up the structure. Do you guys know what conduit is for? Exactly. So that's how we that's how we get the wire to our lights. So you'll set a box. So put, imagine you see your light fixture in the concrete behind it. There's a box, and then there's pipes going to the other one. And eventually, they make their way to the electric room to the panel, and that's how you power everything up. Nice. So basically, it's pretty much all PVC right because it, it's in concrete. So it's it's PVC pipe. Sometimes we use Smurf tube. Yeah. Sometimes we use a PVC coated MC cable. It just depends, you know, on the job and the specs. But yeah, exactly. So conduit is essentially a pipe. Conduit's a pipe, and they got different types. Okay. So oh, like okay. Uh, this is PVC. Then you got EMT. We got rigid and, and stuff like that. Gotcha. Cool. Romex. Romex is wire, like more like cabling. That's what we're gonna do in the units. You got MC cable that's got metal around the wire. That's for going through metal studs. Then you got Romex that goes through wood studs. Oh. Yeah. Big transformer. Wow. wow. Big 10,000. It's not that big. It's like 10,000 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's pretty big. How you guys Crane. So it will come on a truck, and then a small crane will will lift it off the truck. Everything here, all the equipment has to be rated for a certain amount of pounds. Like this one's probably a 6K. So you would only want to lift like a four to 5,000 pound transformer with it because the more you boom out, the less weight it's rated for and you could tip over. So you don't just jump in equipment and pick stuff up. It has to be rated for that weight. 
it's all safety and Ron's a specialist in that. So he would be checking up on me, making sure I got the right stuff. As soon as we see heavy weights, we automatically call to ask the question. You yeah. I mean, to make sure we have adequate equipment um, and the capabilities to place it where it needs to go. Ron actually helped me set my generator at my last project. So he was actually out there, hands-on, helping me rig it, helping me set it, making sure I had the right equipment. So, uh, yeah, he's a man. Yep. That's cool. And that's the thing, if you don't know something, you don't have to know everything to run these projects because you got so much help. So if you run into an issue with safety and you don't know what you're doing, you just call Ron, you call Pat. If you don't know how to read something on a blueprint, you call your project manager, your project engineer. Um, Colin's learning fast. Sometimes he's out here more than me and he'll know something I don't know. So it's just all about communication, backing each other up. It's not what you know, it's what you do. You know what I mean? So anybody can do this. You know, just get your right certifications and jump in and let's go. Yeah. Right Ask on. questions too, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. You guys, like you were just saying, yeah. that's really important. We have plenty of women in the field. There's a, there's a female sheet rocker, a female carpenter. We've got female electricians. I had a female field engineer for two years. So it's just, it doesn't matter. You yeah. know, we, we can all do it. That's right. Yeah. That's cool. That's good advice, Frank. So you guys are gonna notice in between all the buildings, we have a tent power skid and we have a generator. So this generator is feeding that temp power skid to provide power for all the tools because there's no power here. So you need to generate it by a generator and that's the, that's the way they feed all the uh, drills and saws and stuff like that. So just so you guys know what that is. And we'll go, uh, we'll go sneak up on Chewy so he can show you kind of how he does it. Yeah, no, let's do it. Oh, here we go. <laughs> So that's the way he gets his measurement. He'll get a measurement point, set it, that'll be his mark. So he'll mark one, and then he'll come up with another spot, and he'll put his measuring tape, boom, there. That's where he went for point. So just so you guys know, this is the kitchen, right? So the, the height of these boxes is critical because you have the countertop. Yeah. In the countertop, you have a backsplash. And if you're not perfect, not only will you be against code because it's not ADA height, but you'll be too low and you'll be behind a counter or in the backsplash. And then what we have to do is we have to come over here and cut open the sheetrock and fix it. And then that's a potential back charge. So you just wanna, you wanna get all your information, do your investigation, double, triple check, and make sure they're at the right height before sheetrock goes in. Wow. So I do got your three games. And then you want your, your laser to make sure they're all the same. Cause when the kitchen's all done and, and it's the cabinets are in and the counters are in, you want it to look really nice and Perfect. Nice. Yeah. And here's uh, the style of units that we got going on. This is a studio. So that's our studio. This is a 1A, which we got two of them, which are back here. And then it goes so forth and so forth. You got 1B, which we hardly get a chance to get to, except for we have one in, uh, in uh, C. Mm -hmm. We had that one. Then uh, 2A, then 2B, which I think we might have another one back here right now, 2B. And so all these little devices that you see are certain style boxes. So the blue ones will be for two gain, which are going to be the ones on the bottom. And then uh, the green ones will be our three gain. And our red ones will be our single gains. And then there's a purple one that has four gain, but we're not really installing those. And as for fans, they're metal boxes, we know that. So, And then we got pancakes. So it's just... A lot of cross-referencing and a, a lot of uh, repetition stuff that we get going. So then we just start picking up and getting a little faster. And this is the unit that we are in right now, which is a this is a 3A alternate, which was a pain in the butt because we try to use it for everything, but it doesn't. So as you see, when you first come in, oh no, this is a 3A. It's a little different. I just gave you the, that was the corridors, which is the whole layout of the building. Okay. So that's C actually, that's that building. That's, that's building C. Okay. But this is uh, the unit, how we first started doing our layout. We started doing walk-in and then we take a look at the room, see what room we're in. But before that, I usually just go off of this and tell me what unit it is and I'll just start getting back into it. So. Yeah, we'll take a look at it. That's good. And these are RCP, so 
this is um, for our lighting and the ceiling. Whatever you see it's shaded, that's gonna be a drop ceiling. So you might think it's done, but it's still gonna have sheet rock and they're gonna still lower the ceiling. Okay. And it'll give you the dimensions as for heights and stuff like that. This is a the building, uh, the yeah, the unit next door, which is a four bedroom. Yeah. Which is pretty big if you guys want to take a look at it. No, no, we saw that. That was like, oh. And that like, one was, I think that was the first room we went to. Before. Yeah. And then here's this unit as for what we got as in for lights. My name is Jaden Green. I'm an estimating intern at Royal Electric and I currently go to Sacramento State University. I study electrical engineering and I think Royal Electric is the perfect fit for me. Um, we just had two amazing job sites today. We learned a lot, you know, once again, I learned the overall construction of how a whole project works, starting with the owners and then the foremen's and then the general contractors and then the subcontractors. I just never knew how the whole set up work you know and even learning the little details with the subcontractors like the whole laser situation like 360 lasers and all that type of stuff that was pretty cool um learning about all the different types of conduits and wires um met a lot of great people shout out ron shout out frank shout out everybody you know um yeah i'm glad and you know can't wait for other opportunities as well too so my name is joshua Wiaz. i am an estimating intern for Royal Electric. I currently attend Consumers River College. I am a construction management major. Today's tour was really cool. I really enjoyed how we were able to come out, meet new people. We met Frank. Frank showed us around the job sites. We got to see what's on those plans in real life, how it's coming along, and I really enjoyed that. My name is Amy Calderon. I'm an estimating intern for Royal Electric, and I'm currently studying at Sacramento State as a construction management, management major. Um, something that I really enjoyed about this um, job site and just walking it is like me being in the estimating department and being working multifamily commercial, I can actually see what I'm doing in the office, being done in the field, seeing that hands-on work and whatnot. Like, I really enjoyed that part today. I felt like I had an epiphany realizing what I really want to do, uh, which is I would like to be a field engineer. So that's something I really enjoyed and like the fun fact about how this job site is actually on um, native land that was in uh, a burial site. I think this job site was really uh, fun and I learned a lot asking questions about what I'm actually learning during my internship here at Royal Electric.